Well, the Bloc Québécois says whoever leads a potential public inquiry should be the one defining its scope, and the party has some names in mind for the government, including a former Supreme Court justice and a former Liberal cabinet minister. Let's welcome Christine Normandin. She is the Bloc Deputy House Leader. Ms. Normandin, good to have you here. Good afternoon, Andrew. Now, we'll talk about uh, the demands and the names that your party is putting forward. But first, can you give us an update on what's happening in terms of the talks between the opposition parties and with the government? Uh, well, there's, there's not been uh, official talks, as far as I know. Uh, we got, uh, a, let's say, a courtesy call from the Conservatives uh, looking for an eventual discussion. But so far, there's no official discussions that have happened. I do hope that is going to take place in the, in the near future. There's only 11 days left to the current session. And one of the, the things we're asking in our letter is that we find someone by the end of the semester, since we're, we're hoping that it can uh, result in a vote from the House and that the person that will be recommended for, uh, to be the commissioner or judge or president of an eventual inquiry will be um, recommended by all leaders in the House and then voted for uh, by the Parliament. Right, and you're mentioning a leader, uh, sorry, a letter that your leader, uh, Yves-Francois Blanchet, has sent uh, to Minister Dominic LeBlanc, and that letter does include some names that could head up an inquiry, including uh, former Justice uh, Louise Arbour, former Justice Minister uh, Erwin Kotler, uh, as well you have uh, former Ambassador Guy Saint-Jacques and Louise Otis, a former Quebec appeal judge. So why are these the names you're putting forward? Well, it's a list of suggestions uh, of people who have a good background that could be uh, suited uh, to lead uh, an eventual inquiry, and we insist on the fact that it, it is a, um, a public inquiry um, and not public hearings. Uh, we didn't want to set criteria. We were more looking at the backgrounds uh, of people who are already, uh, for example, have an experience, Louise Abel being one with tons of experience uh, leading inquiries or um, or, or uh, doing uh, work on different uh, very pol politicized topics. Uh, so we were more looking at people with backgrounds, people that we feel have a liberty of speech uh, and have uh, knowledge also of China, Guy Saint-Jacques being one of them. So instead of insisting on specific criteri criteria, we were looking more generally at resumes, uh, people with interesting resumes, and that's a list of suggestions. Basically. Okay, so let me ask you then specifically about Erwin Kotler, because as you know, he's a former Liberal minister, he's a former caucus colleague of the Prime Minister. Why did you include him? Uh, most, mostly because of his background with regards to human rights. Uh, he's done terrific work uh, in the past, uh, including on uh, Rive Badawi's case. And we felt that he was uh, someone who would have a uh, liberty of speech uh, with regards to what's happening in China. And one of the, uh, the topics we want to be covered uh, with an eventual inquiry would be um, threats to uh, MPs and to uh, local diaspora, the, the community. And we felt that with it, his experience, he could be one of the people going more in depth uh, and not be naive towards China. And I, we think that that was something important to be included. All right. Now, the government uh, also wants you and the other opposition parties to suggest some terms of reference and how a, an inquiry might handle sensitive national security information on foreign interference, and in that open letter from uh, Mr. Blanchet to Dominic LeBlanc, he says that should be left to the commissioner themselves down the road. Why is that? Uh, well, from the beginning, we, what we asked for was someone to be named after a, recommend a consensus from leaders and from the House. So uh, as soon as we have someone who's, who's got that kind of confidence from the House, we feel that it would be normal to give them the most latitude possible with uh, regards to uh, the scope of the inquiry. And since that person would have confidence of the House, it, we felt it was normal that it would be that person to determine what would have to go in camera, what would not have to go in camera, instead of uh, having maybe partisan discussions 
uh, prior to the inquiry on the scope or what should be or should not be in public. If we have confidence in someone, uh, if we have enough confidence in someone to be a president, judge, or commissioner on a public inquiry, we should, uh, we, by extension, we should have enough confidence in them uh, in order for them to, to set the scope of the inquiry. It, it goes together in a way. Okay, let's talk about time. Um, you did talk about uh, time pressure that we're nearing uh, the end of the spring sitting. You, the Bloc, the Conservatives, and the NDP all talk about wanting a fast timeline for a potential inquiry uh, ahead of the next election campaign. Now, in his report, the special rapporteur, about to be the former special rapporteur, David Johnston, wrote that public inquiries can last years. He says uh, that there's still going to be issues with classified information. So. How do you deal with those concerns and still uh, try and get an inquiry done in the time frame you're looking for? The only timeline that we mentioned was the one that was meant to start the inquiry, the, 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 the idea of naming someone and have it voted in the House. Otherwise, we didn't set a timeline for the end of the inquiry. We mentioned that the scope of the inquiry should be something decided by an eventual commissioner. That goes uh, also for the, the time needed. if. Uh, after digging and scratching, uh, the, the commissioner, commissioner feels that he needs more time. Well, so be it. We do hope that the eventual inquiry would, will have been uh, dealt with before the next election. But uh, it, it's a hope. It's not a time constraint that we want to impose on an eventual commissioner. But if we want to get there, the first thing to do would be to start as soon as we can. And that's why we're hoping for a quick start and a quick naming of a commissioner. Okay, we'll have to leave it there for now. Christine Normandin, thanks for your time. A pleasure.